Hi Sarfaz, thanks very much for taking part in the Business Spotlight series. I'm going to hand it straight across to you to introduce yourself and what you do. Hi, so thank you for including me. Uh, my name is Safraz. I run a luxury car rental and chauffeur company. Uh, we provide luxury cars, anything from 4x4s to more executive saloons and luxury, uh, extreme luxury as I define them as, your, as in your Bentleys and your Rolls Royces, um, to international travellers, uh, corporate customers, um anyone that requires a service predominantly we're based in london most of our work is contained in london um, but we also operate nationwide and have gone as far as ireland before right and um where, where do they get the cars is, is it from the airport is it in the city center uh so our office is based in mayfair but the type of people that we tend to deal with if they're flying in they usually fly in pjs if they fly into heathrow and they want us to drop the car off then we deliver the car to them in the car park and meet them at the terminal um, and assist them with their luggage and take them to the car brilliant and how long have you done that for how long has this been running uh, so the business has been running over a decade now. Um, it's had its changes. So we did previously concentrate extremely heavily on supercars. We've gone away from that business. It's not a kind of business that we want to concentrate on. Um, predominantly, we concentrate on extreme luxury vehicles now, um, such as your likes of Range Rover, Mercedes, Bentley and Rolls Royce. Hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I think you, said it you tend to aim, aim at clients who are used to that level of, of, of luxury and want to continue that when they're visiting London. Exactly that. Perfect. And uh, it's obviously been running for, for a little while. What was the impact of COVID on the business? Uh, obviously, there was no um, there was <laughs> there was no international tourism. But we were very lucky. We were very fortunate in COVID where we helped with the ferrying of the old people that came across. I don't know if you remembered that. Um, and then we had a, quite a few private aviation um, assistance uh, that we provided from multiple uh, passenger vehicles to larger vehicles. And then we had to do some van stuff as well. Um, so we, we we did all right in COVID because the, the thing with COVID is obviously the staff were furloughed. It, I literally kind of ran a one-man lean team, um, as in myself operating it. And it was very few inquiries, but what did come through was um, quality. Excellent. And and tell me a bit more about that. Tell me a bit more about the service that you provide. Obviously, you mentioned the, the cars, but what, what sort of stands out in terms of the service that you do? Uh, so our service is focused on um, being uh, impeccable. Um, so from the cars being the latest vehicles to making sure that they're cleaned and uh, prepared to the highest levels, um, fully insured, uh, if there's any specifics, you know, water and newspapers in the car, um, our delivery drivers or drivers, they're all English speaking, fully qualified, have done or experienced in chauffeur for many years. Um, so we concentrate on quality rather than quantity. So we're not one of your run of the mill rental companies um, who have, you know, 10,000 Ford Fiestas and do them. Um, in different prices depending on how busy are. we have a strategic uh, book of vehicles and it's based on what we have experienced over the last kind of 10 years apart from the two years in covid and based on that uh, you know we're able to provide more four by fours in the winter um, and more luxury cars in the summer mm. yeah, i think I, I had a look at the website and so one of the one of the things there was that if someone books a Bentley, they get the Bentley, they don't get an equivalent. <laughs> no, so we could, we we don't do that. And a lot of the main uh, rental companies do provide that like for like service. Uh, the thing is, if you're a BMW 7 Series person and you're a BMW 7 Series person, if you're a Mercedes S Class person, you're an S Class. There's a big difference. Although they're the same category of car, you know, premium, luxury, um, they're not the same car it's like comparing a Range Rover to an X5 or an Audi Q7 a person that drives a Range Rover has a certain way with a vehicle when he wants to drive a Range Rover so you can't do like for like we don't do any like for like 
yeah, it makes it, they feel very different between the, the different brands. So excellent. And what are the aspirations for the company in the next five years? Um, to be honest, we've been very fortunate over COVID because one of the biggest factors is we've seen a huge price increase. Um, so the next five years is just building a fleet and potentially having a larger cash fleet. And I'm getting into a position rather than going to buy two, three, four cars from a manufacturer again and buying 10 cars in one go and getting a better discount and having a better finance arm and leveraging the opportunity a lot better. Uh, we were very lucky. Um, what we had, we disposed of at the right time. And then what we procured uh, ended up being non-depreciative assets. So um, we've been fortunate in that instance and we just need to maintain them. Okay, brilliant. And then on, on the other side of that, what are the challenges for the industry? Insurance, it has been for the last God knows how many years, um, and it will continue to be so over the next five, ten years. Um, you know, the miraculous, miraculous thing was that even though we had COVID and everyone was locked up, um, insurance premiums still rose during that period, which is uh, unimaginable because there was no cars on the road. Um, other challenges, staffing. It's got a lot more difficult to get staff now because obviously I think Brexit's had an impact on that. Um, and then lastly, I think the final thing is, uh, you know, there will come a point when the market will turn and how we accommodate to that level of depreciation that will come, I, I think, literally overnight. Um, but no one can second guess when that will happen. Yeah, really interesting. Uh, thank you. So it's, thanks for the, the honesty, actually. So it's great to, to get some insights people into the, into the sector they're in. And I suppose on, again, when I speak to people, it's great to find people who, who do think about these things. You've had the business for a number of years. What would you say has been the biggest learning for you as a business owner? I don't think one specific thing, but I, I have to say, I think um, we used to do a lot of manual intensive tasks. And now I look at everything and see how much time it consumes. Something that takes, you know, half an hour a day. If you equate that, that's, you know, two and a half hours a week based on a Monday to Friday. And if you do that over 52 weeks, it's a considerable amount of time. So if you can streamline that process, um, it's amazing. I think the... The, the sector itself has changed with technology. So we used to employ a bookkeeper before, since the introduction of Zero, which was about four years ago. Um, we was able to lose the bookkeeper and just do that ourselves because it made it so simple. Um, you know, and then as technology advances and gets better and better, I think um, you will find new opportunities for people to do different roles to ones that used to be there before so a simple example of that is if you imagine the world of taxis and imagine the world of uber taxis used to always have free controllers per day based on eight hour shifts to take the phone calls book it and then dispatch it uber doesn't have anyone to book it uh take the book in dispatch it and then you know uh, follow it through if that makes sense so i think technology in in, in a kind of Integration of technology is the biggest thing that will save companies money um, over the coming years. And I think it will get a lot more simpler. I think the biggest fear factor for us is going to be um, car theft. We're into a new world with the keyless go systems. Obviously, you fix a problem, but you start a new problem. So um we have to be sharper we have to be a bit more careful with tracking and um, making sure that we've got the best security measures in place and vetting customers i think it's really important especially when you do with in international customers because the information isn't readily as available as it is for uk customers so that's that's where i am now yeah um, thank you again some some good insights thanks i'm glad, glad i asked that um and then what what is it that drives you? You know, obviously we mentioned Lily, rather another business behind you there, but what is it that drives you as a business person? For me, I think the car rental company has 
Okay, so I've got other businesses. I've got three other businesses. Um, the car rental company is probably the only thing I'm attached to. Um, the other businesses, I'm, I'm unemotional because I'm not attached to them. So this was the first, and it's all also the greatest networking tool that I have because these are the guys that you want to kind of mix with, the ladies and the gents, because they are uh, the people that are affluent in this world. It's not cheap to, you know, rent a brand new Range Rover or a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce. So if you get the opportunity to mix and mingle, it's always worthwhile because you learn more and more things from these people. Um, so for me, um, that's what drives me is meeting the next big customer, learning from them, um, potentially new business opportunities. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, obviously we've got screens behind us that's all started indirectly because of this company and the growth of that company has been heavily due to the network of individuals that I know from this company. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. That's great. Um, so as, as a final thing, is there any news or any offer you'd like to extend to the audience? Um, at the end of the day, uh, I don't believe in doing discounts or anything like that, but we are like ex extremely competitively priced and we provide an unmatched service and we've got all new cars. And we've got Range Rover stock, new Range Rover stock that no one else got. So if you're planning on buying a Range Rover, please try and hire one before you buy it. Make sure you get the right engine and the right vehicle. And yeah, if anyone's in the market or, um, you know, it's great to network. So do get in touch. Great. Thank you very much. It's been been great to meet you. Great to find out about your business. And uh, look forward to, to seeing the development of the one behind you as well. Thank you so much.